Hi everyone and welcome to the quick market update. Today's going to be a little bit longer but I'm going to try to keep it as concise as I can without going into a huge amount of detail just to give you some ideas of the levels to the upside and the downside that I'm looking at. Maybe give you a little bit of a heads up for your own trading plan. So let's get straight into it. Firstly having a look at the monthly chart. At the moment we're looking at the monthly and we can see that right now is looking like a gravestone doji which if you're a bull is a little bit concerning. This is not a bullish monthly candle. However, in terms of market structure, we can see that nothing has really changed. We still have a low, a high, higher low, higher high, and at the moment still a higher low. So we're still in bullish monthly market structure. However, not looking great at the monthly at the moment. So having a look at the weekly, again, nothing's really changed from last week. We still have, depending how you look at it, a bullish market structure it's very similar or the same as the monthly with the, lo the higher low here however if you're looking at it this way you can look at the high low lower high lower low lower high at the moment and we could be coming for another lower low so depending how you look at it, it could be bullish or bearish on the daily you guys will know that we were looking at this kind of relentless downtrend, just lower high, lower high, lower high. We broke out. We've put in a little bit of a high here and we're sort of retesting this breakout area at the moment. So we've had a low, a high, and at the moment still a higher low on the daily. Then let's have a look at the more local market structure. So I think it was clear that we put in a high. We had this kind of sort of uh, low region down here a lower high and at the moment a lower low. So we're bearish locally on the four hour. Now let's have a look at some of the key levels. I'm just going to leave them on the chart for you guys um, so you can draw them yourself. If you use the same pair and the same levels, you should be able to see why these levels have been put in. So first of all, I'm going to put on my high time frames uh, support and resistance levels. And then I'm going to put on my naked points of control, which are taken from EXO charts. So you guys are welcome to copy those if you wish. Okay, now having a quick review of a setup that we went through in a lot of detail last Monday. So if you missed it, you can check last Monday's video for the full details. But you know that we put in this high and I was really expecting us to come up, take out this region around here and then come back down. So to be perfectly honest with you, I got a little bit stuck in my own bias. I still thought we were going to come up for upside, especially as we were coming up in this uh, area here. I was very busy with other things and I didn't really do the work to refresh my own bias. So uh, whether you're an experienced trader, an intermediate trader or a beginner trader, it's very important that you check yourself and that you're not stuck in a bias. So I learned a lesson last week. I really should have got in shorts in this region even though I was expecting to get into longs around here. There's absolutely no reason why I couldn't have shorted down here. Um, I missed out on you know a very decent 14% move. I did make some good trades last week, a lot of which I shared in the Discord. I don't win every trade. I don't pretend that I do. Uh, but overall, I was profitable last week. But I could have been more profitable if I had just taken the time to check my bias when we were coming down. So we can see that we did reject around this region we put in a high a low we got into this sort of golden pocket region wicked above it ended up sort of back testing this 618 which you know we don't really say that's a good resistance when it's being back tested like that but we weren't able to clear it and then as we rejected down past here the order flow was very bearish the uh, open interest was increasing a lot of net long sorry net shorts were opening this would have been a good place to short so unfortunately i missed that but i did learn a lesson so let's have a look now at some trades I got into as we came lower down. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to make it nice and large so you guys can see uh, where all of the confluence was drawn from. So I talked a lot about this single print high. I was looking for that to act as support. We also had the 618 and the golden pocket region and the big range value area low, which I talked about a lot. I thought it made a lot of sense for us to back test that and then put in a higher low at that point. So it was an area I was very interested in bidding. So let's take off some of the mess, clean up the chart a little bit, and we can take a look at what actually happened as we came down. So we can see in this region here, we as we came down, we bounced off that single print high, 
really almost perfectly for a really pretty nice bounce to the upside. Um, I entered my f beginner of the position here and I had a few bids layering into this golden pocket region. So I had a bid here, a bid around the 618, another bid towards the bottom of the golden pocket region. So at, at the time that those bids hit, unfortunately I wasn't feeling very well. Uh, so I wasn't really able to manage them. And of course I was in profit for a while and we ended up losing that and dumping down and really filling this single print region. So I was stopped out. The good thing was as it was coming down, I thought, okay, I'm gonna let this run. I'm gonna let it invalidate me. I had my stop loss just below here. Um, and I was interested in bidding this lower region and I was kind of tempted to allow it to become a bigger trade just to sit in a loss, maybe have some more long entries and make it a bigger trade. But I stuck to my guns and said, nope, if I take a loss, I take a loss. If I'm gonna bid a lower region, I'm gonna open that as a new trade. So there's something that at least I can be proud of that I did take a loss, but at least I stuck to my plan. So let's have a look at where I actually did enter once this single print region filled, which we can see once we got acceptance was done very quickly. So not only can we see that we also had some confluence down here. Sorry. With the 786 of this Fibonacci level, we also had a weekly point of control and the low of the single print in this region. I personally, once I saw it coming down so harshly, I wanted to wait for what I felt was a bit of the bigger support. So we'll have a look at that region now. So here we can see that we had this 618 and a daily naked point of control. Let's have a look at the daily naked point of control. So you see, as we traded down, we hit the na naked point of control really perfectly before a bounce. And the 618 again was also hit almost perfectly exactly uh, on the 618 before we bounced up. So I did enter a trade, not directly on the 618, just a little bit higher. Uh, it was actually around this region here. I uh, set my stops below this. I felt that we didn't put in a very strong low. The buyback wasn't very strong. Um, so let's have a look at how we came into that level and how we bounced out of that level on the order flow. Okay, so this is the bounce here. So let's have a look at how we came down into it. And of course, remembering that it was the weekend. And of course, today the US markets are also closed. So we'd expect, we'd expect things to be a little bit less high volume, a little bit uh, less liquidity in the market, especially as it's a long weekend. A lot of the big players are going to close their positions out, sit out the weekend. So even the order books are going to be a little bit thinner than usual. We are really dumping down. So we can see that net, net shorts were really quite aggressively opening and we had increases in open interest. So this was a good sign that this isn't a weak downtrend. We're really pushing down here. And if we turn on the rect indicator here, we can see we're also being fueled by really a lot of long liquidations, a lot of positions being stopped out, of course, including mine, but my, my stop out was a little higher. I think a lot of people put their stops down in this area thinking the low was already in. So they were getting stopped out. And as we came down into the level, we can see that shorts really stopped pushing. So this was a sign for me that as the short stopped pushing and the long started pushing into this region, that this was worth a risk for me because I felt like we were gonna get at least into the VWAP. There were a lot of longs opening in this level that were, sorry, a lot of shorts opening in this level that were really late shorts that were getting off very easily on their heavy short bids very far into a downtrend. So it made sense to me that there was gonna be a little bit of a uh, short squeeze we can see that did happen in this region and with the rect indicator we can see a lot of those shorts getting stopped out so let's just turn that off so for me i took a first take profit around the vwap just a little bit higher by the time it hit then my second take profit actually i saw this high with sort of a swing failure and then a lot of longs pushing in here but unable to take the high out so we had a little bit of bearish divergence it wasn't a lot it was about uh three million ish but there was a bearish divergence on this high so i took a much bigger take profit here expecting that okay this isn't going to hold we're going to end up dumping down which we did and the rest of my position which wasn't that much at the time uh, got stopped out at break even so now currently i'm in no position so i need to look for my next trade 
Okay, so last week I believe I shared a very similar pool here for uh, where I was looking at this point of control. And this was from the low to the current high uh, locally. But now we can see if we take this volume all the way to the current price action, the point of control has moved up. We still have a high volume node here. So it doesn't give me a lot of actionable info. So really then I want to have a look at, okay, what was an area of consolidation? So here we can see we had a big buy up, an impulse. Now we put in a range here. So we can see roughly something like this was the area of consolidation. So I want to see what was the uh, volume profile of that area of consolidation. So if we pull this one to this candle where we impulsed into it, and this candle where we impulsed out of it, and get it. Okay. Now we can see the point of control was roughly, I think, almost exactly the same point of control of the entire uptrend. Let's just move this uh, one candle to the right. Okay, perfect. So here we can see that we also have a area of confluence here with a daily support and resistance. Let's just turn those back on. And a naked point of control. And if we turn them all on, we can see that this area here, we have three almost exactly the same areas of confluence for support. So this makes me think, okay, would I like to long this? Let's have a look at whether that makes sense. So looking here, we can see that I don't feel like we put in a very strong low here. It was on a weekend that we know is a long weekend. We didn't have a lot of buyback. Uh, we're still, if you look at the trend, just clearly downtrending on the four hour. I think it's too late for us to short here. However, we're still looking for a potential higher low on the daily. So that's my alert for a swing failure of this low. Uh, but I'm going to carry on and, let you, and uh, update you guys. So we were looking for a higher low on the daily around this region. But if we think this low wasn't very strong, which I don't really, we either have this sort of swing failure with a big buyback. So we'll see if that happens, I guess, very shortly. If not, it makes sense for us to bounce in this region. So checking my bias, I still think that we should be putting in a higher low on the daily until proven otherwise. To me, that still makes the most sense as a trade. If we don't do that here, then having a lot of buyback here makes sense for an entry. But I don't think we really need to rush into the trade. So we can grind down or we might just dump down. And unless we get this sort of big buyback, which I think is not that likely, we're more likely to get a bit of a loss, a little bit of chop. And then we might get some change in market structure. We might get increases in open interest, increases in, in uh, positive delta, new longs opening, a change in local market structure. Then we can get into it. And then we should have an area of consolidation, hopefully here we can have a little bit more of an intelligent stop loss. So for me, that's an area that I'd be looking at potentially to get into for a bounce. But I also don't want to rush into it, especially if it happens over the weekend. Take a little bit of a karma entry, wait for a bit of a sign of strength in the market before getting into that trade. Now again, having a look at the naked point of controls, we can see that we've just closed a week and of course, uh, we have to look for whether we have any naked point of controls and we can see we have a weekly naked point of control here. The interesting thing is that we can see it lines up almost perfectly with this point of control of the previous week. So although it's not a naked point of control, it's obviously taken out. The levels are very, very close. So I've named it a double naked point of control even though it's not uh, both naked just because I'm cognizant of the fact that if the point of control over two weeks was very similar, there's going to be a lot of resistance in that area, most likely. So looking again to the upside here, we have this naked point of control here and this daily level. And then we also have this key high here. So I'd like to look for this region uh, to act as resistance if we get up there. Um, so if I'm in a long at the time, obviously if I've longed here somewhere, I'm going to be looking here definitely for some take profits. I'd also look at it potentially for a short. As I said, we're obviously in a downtrend locally on the four hour, but it's too late for me to short now. However, if we get up here, then it makes sense for me to look for short. So 
I'd have to look for a reaction. It's possible we could just tap the bottom and reject straight away. So you need to look at the order flow, look for a good entry, possibly on a retest. Otherwise, we want to really look for some kind of, again, change in market structure, something that tells us, okay, this makes sense now. We have a good stop loss here uh, above wherever the high was put in. We have some increases in open interest, some increases in negative delta, some new longs, some new shorts opening, sorry, potentially some trap longs above the high here to fuel a long squeeze on the way down. So I don't think this needs to be a panicked entry. I'm going to set my alerts for the bottom of the area and also look at how the price action develops if and when we get into it. Okay, so just wrapping up with a little bit of a recap. First of all, um, bias wise, we're obviously downtrending on the four hour, but I'm still looking for a higher low on the weekly to trade up to a little bit higher levels. Uh, clearly, we could do anything. I'm not really looking for all time highs, but as I said before, I'd be looking for at least these levels, if not around the 52K region up here. Um, so I'd like to get into a long if possible. I think it's too late to get into shorts. The area I'd be most interested for a long is around here. If we get up to this region, I would definitely look to take some profits on a long trade. I would potentially look to get into a new short trade. I think it's too late for us to get into big shorts right now. And I would be very interested in taking out this area. I think there's a lot of shorts to be squeezed if we start coming up here. I think people get incredibly bullish once we get up to this region. So it'd be a really nice place for us to look for a short. Again, the target would depend on how we get there and how the structure looks on the different time frames at the time. Um, so I'd need to have a look at that as we get up to that area. So hopefully that has helped you guys uh, get a little bit of insight into the market, maybe help you to make your own trading plans, plan your areas to the upside and the downside that you're interested in, and to make your trades in a calm, collected and rational manner. Okay, just before I go, just a quick shout out again for the Mindset Bybit trading competition. Registration is still open. Competition starts on the 1st of March, so it's coming up relatively soon. We've now unlocked the next level of prizes. Um, the competition is 100% free of charge to join. You just have to deposit 100 USDT to be able to participate in the competition. That will be your trading funds. You can trade any USDT pair. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Most importantly for me, I think it's going to be a learning experience for everybody, whether you're in the group or not. But if you're in the Mindjack Discord, which is 100% free of charge, uh, link is in the description. I think that we're going to be talking about it a lot as we go through the competition. And it's going to give you a really accelerated way of learning your trading. So we hope you guys get involved and we're really looking forward to it. So hope to see you guys there. Mm -hmm.